Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm a little late today. We're gonna go that it was for my few friends who are also always late to my stream and I was just trying to accommodate. But I was really setting up a demo, so it took me a while. So good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. Hey, Robin, how are you? You know what, Robin? While I have you on here, because I keep forgetting to message you on Instagram, I know you started a gluten-free sourdough starter. Can I barter some from you? Because I would love to try it. So next time you give it a really good feed, are you willing to share? Either next time you're in Port Huron or I'll come to you or whatever. Let me know if that's something we can do. Hey, let's see, Tracy's Homestead, what's up? Good morning. Hey, Lacey. Lacey, thank you again for all the love on Instagram this past week. You are wonderful. She was very helpful in sharing. I did a, um, on my own personal Instagram, I did a, a push to 1,000 followers, and I just hit it. Um, so I am, I'm doing a giveaway on there my own little shameless plug. If you want some sunflower seeds, um, you're going to have to come find me on Instagram. Ah, oh, thank you, Robin. You are wonderful. Tell me what you want. I got lots of seeds or other things or jam or something. I will barter whatever you would like me to. Um, yay, Aaron. You, I actually have my coffee today in one of my favorite mugs by one of my favorite potters. What are y'all planting this spring? Um, well, I have a lot of root vegetables happening. All my herbs are up and going, so I can have big bulky plants as soon as I want them. Uh, allium, so onions, chives, uh, garlic chives. I, I said roots, oh, all your greens. Not your tenders yet, but kale. Mustards are pretty okay. They're pretty hearty. Um, cabbages, broccoli, lots of things. Lots of things happening. Can you plant pothos in water? Are you saying to, pr either way, actually. So I personally propagate my pothos in water. Um, I just, when I cut it, I just stick it right in water. Um, if I'm around my grandparents, I'll go get a willow branch. If you don't know, willow trees have a natural um, rooting hormone in them. And so you just need a slice of fresh branch in your water and it helps things root so quickly. So phone a friend for that if you don't have a willow tree available. But yes, you can grow your roots in the pothos and you can either plant it up to soil from there or I'm gonna be honest, all my plants, all my house plants, garden, everything thrives on neglect for me. So there's been times where I've left a fully rooted pothos in water for months and like it's fine until I'm ready to pot it up. So, oh, Christina, but you made it and at the beginning of the show. I started late just for you. Hello, hello. Good afternoon from Ireland. Oh, yay, you got your soil blocker. Sweet. Yeah, honestly, this was last second. I had a few ideas on what I wanted to talk about this morning, but I was like, we should just uh, wrap up soil blocking so you guys can get the gist of it. And I decided like on my way to work, which is why it had to take me a few minutes to set my demo up, but I got it. Here's, don't tell the postal service. I won't show that side. Here's my mail bin um, right now. In office, I had access to worm casting so and water dripping all over me, so that's what I did. We'll get to it here in a short minute, but it's in there. So we'll wait until I can collect a few more of you peoples. Ordered last year and was thinking of using for winter sewing, possibly. Absolutely. Are you going to be doing your winter sewing in trays with like humidity domes and like tape them around, put those outside? Because if you're doing winter sewing in, say, jugs or something like that, no need to soil block. But if you're going to do it some some way on a tray with a dome over it, then absolutely that would work. Good morning, North Star. Wireworm for pota uh, potatoes, excuse me. 
George, I'm gonna multitask and look into that one. I don't deal with wireworm. And in my pest series last year, honestly, I don't think I did wireworm. So we can add them to this. It'll be closer to um, start of season is when I run my, um, my pest series where we kind of break down everything you need to know about them. So we're gonna multitask, check that out. Soil blockers. Yeah, Johnny's an awesome source. Actually, I got mine from the Gardener's Workshop. So in case Johnny's is sold out, North Star, if you want to plant them in too, they're an awesome source. Yeah, Lisa Ziegler. Ha. Huh. So soil blocking cuts grow time by a third. So I'm trying to be patient before breaking out the blockers for the first time. Um. Yeah, honestly, this is only my first-ish year. I did a little last year and loved it, so I'm going hardcore this year on soil blockers. But I have heard Lisa say it cuts one-third. I didn't change my schedule at all, so I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah, did y'all know it's two, 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 two Tuesday? <laughs> and it's Tuesday. Yeah, so look at the calendar. Yes, um, do you pronounce it Jamie or Jame? Yes, potatoes can be planted before your last freeze. You do want them pretty deep if you're gonna do this. The issue is typically for having your ground workable to get your tubers into the ground. I wouldn't suggest doing like uh, putting them on the ground level and like mounting over them because uh, you don't necessarily want them to freeze solid they'll still probably be fine, but it's not great. Uh, so being able to work your ground is gonna be your problem. That's why Irish planting, the method of Irish planting potatoes is planting them in the fall and leaving them through winter so that way they're ready to emerge in spring. Rochester, New York, good morning. Best mulches for vegetable bed. Um, anything. <laughs> I don't necessarily suggest pine shavings for everything. You know, that's a popular one. If it's all you have, it's great. You know, people who don't have access to mulch will go to a fa like family farm and get pine shavings and do that for mulching. It's fine. Like, I know Luke loves to do it for his garlic. That's a great um, place to use it. But I'll do anything from raw wood chips to chopping up leaves to uh, if I'm pulling weeds, I like pull and drop them. The sun will bake the roots. So it's so few of them retake that it's a, not a problem. Um, you can do straw. You want to be careful with that because you don't want it to have too many seeds in it because then you'll get weeds. So there's kind of a balance you got to have there. Um, hey, Melissa, I'm glad you made it. Let's see what, uh, I, yeah. So mulching can really be anything. You just, you don't want stuff so compact up to your plants, right? Because you don't, mulch holds moisture. You don't want it so buried up to the stalk of your plant because it could cause rot and damage your plant or give it disease or something. So thick around the soil is great just make sure your plant has a little it doesn't need much but just a little space to breathe yes my onions are starting to emerge with these weird in michigan i don't know what it's like by y'all but in michigan here we're having like a 47 degree day and then we're back in the teens for three days and then we'll have another 40 degree day so things are getting kind of confused but they're just starting to come up a few things are, and I'm getting excited. Any rose knowledge, Haley? Some. So hit me with your question, Christina, and I will do my best. I read that I catch them to attract them. It looks like Shirley uses a trap for her wire worms. Yeah, that one I'm, I'm going to still have to look into, but hopefully that is helpful. Anyone else who have dealt with wireworms, please throw in your info so it could be helpful to the others. 
Anyone planting in five gallon buckets? Time to go to. Yeah, sandwich shops is great. Um, you, yes, because there's are, there should be food grade, right? So that is great. Sandwich shops, delis, bakeries, um, all good places. Everything is melted. So Thursday we got hit with like six to eight inches or something, and it was beautiful, perfect snow. Um, I'm all for that. I'll take cold if there's snow. And then we immediately jumped up into almost 50 degrees. Everything is melted, so we have flooding everywhere. Yes, temp swings are great for maple season. I'm actually tapping, I think this week is when I decided. I could have done it this past week, but I was dealing with my bees first, which unfortunately did not love the last freeze we had. So they got wiped out late in the game. I got to start all over, but that's fine. I learned a lot. I'm ready to go again. So, okay. Uh, ever bearing strawberries near my blueberries. Level Horizons asks, is it okay to have ever bearing strawberries near my blueberries? Why wouldn't it be? The only thing I'm thinking is that blueberries really like acidic soil. Strawberries don't necessarily need acidic soil. Is that your concern? Otherwise, I've never heard the correlation between. Tell me more. So, uh, message in here. How many of you are using soil blockers this year? I'm curious. When do I put out my overwinter, overwintered potted berry bushes? Amanda, are they are they trying to sprout at all? If they're still dormant, then I'd put them out. Obviously, you have to have malleable soil to work in. So that's going to play a game. All right, I'm seeing all my soil blockers. Um, but you can start hardening them off, especially with these temperature changes. Uh, start putting them out for a little while. Acidity, okay. Um, but they can start, like they're gonna start waking up. All of the berry bushes outside are getting close, at least here in zone six, to waking up. They know spring is coming. Oh, Kelly is on it for her feed bags. She's gonna have so many plants now that you guys told her she can use those to grow in. It's gonna be a good day. Uh, acidity is your concern. Um, yeah, I know strawberries don't need acidity, but I also don't think it'll hinder them too hard. We may have to look into that one a little more. All right, let's go. We're going to do some soil blockers. Cindy Brown has never heard of soil blockers. Don't know how to use it. Oh, I'm so glad. Not that I'm glad that you don't know how to use it. I'm just glad we're doing this. So maybe after you will know how to use it. Sweet. Okay, okay. Let's go your tutorial. Perfect. Sorry for the pounding. All right. I have, I actually think there's three soil block sizes, but I only have two um, because they work for me. So this guy is the three quarter inch. And actually this is the set I got from Johnny's. I have Johnny's and I have Gardner's Workshop. These were delayed and then I panicked and then Gardner's Workshop had theirs on sale, so I did it. Anyways, you can never have enough. Three quarter. Never enough time, thank you so much for that info. Um, Level Horizon, check out their message. Strawberries like 5.4 to 6.5, blueberries, are 4.5 to 5.5. I think you'd be pretty okay. I still wanna look into that a little more. I know a good amount about berries, but honestly, I always check my info before I try to share it, just cause I'd hate to lead, lead one of y'all astray. Um, Uh, 
Uh, Victoria, I want you to ask that question in a minute, your hardening off question. I'll do a quick run on hardening off at the end of this because we could be getting close to hardening off some spring crops to get them out to low tunnels. So bring that back to me. Don't let me forget. Okay. This is a three quarter inch oil block. There are 20 uh, squares in here. It works like a plunger system. So you pack your soil into the bottom, just running it across your soil in your bucket. Most often people use some sort of tote. And then to release them, you, I guess this works, you plunge it down and it'll spit out your blocks. Now, Consistency of your soil is going to be important. All I have access to here at the shop are worm castings, and that's what we're running with right now. Um, typically, I wouldn't go straight worm castings, of course, right? Um, I would mix in some sort of uh, cocoa core. I can't say it, guys. Don't laugh at me. The cocoa rind, I would mix that in. You could do peat. Um, something to air it out a little because worm castings themselves the nu nutrients wouldn't hurt your seeds but they do hold on to a lot of water so i wouldn't want to get into like root rot and it rained today yeah randy give it a second to dry out it'll get better okay so water is very important when it comes to seeing if i'm gonna get dripped on because i overwatered these a little bit which is good because this way i can show you what not to do but I was going really fast and I was impatient. Okay, so in here, I have worm castings. Right now, I can squeeze this. Can you see that? I have water coming out, too wet. But I don't wanna open another bag of worm castings, so it's gonna be fine. I would just be mindful not to water these um, and maybe put some airflow on them just to get them to dry out a little bit. Y'all, I'm covered in water. I put way too much water. Okay, but what you do want it to be to the point that you can squeeze it. I'm right handed. I need to like switch this around. Hold on. Bear with me, team. Okay, this is better. Okay. You wanna be able to squeeze it and have it ball together, but easily be able to like break it apart. So like I said, this one's a little too wet, but it'll do just fine. Okay. See if I can mix it back up because now I've got water everywhere. So what we do is in some sort of tote, again, don't call the mail service on me. I'll clean it, they'll get it back today, it'll be okay. Um, what we do is we take our soil blocker. We're gonna get real crafty here, friends. <laughs> okay, soil blocker, soil. I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna pack as much as I can in on my thick side and then typically I like to use the bare end of my tote to like level it off really well, make sure it's well packed in. So if I get in here, now the, uh, the tricky thing is, is I like to hold it like this. So I'm accidentally like plunging it down while I'm doing this. Try to hold it below the plunger. That way you're making sure you're well packed in. So I go, I do like a, a twisting motion to get it all packed in. Sorry, can't really see this as well as I'd like you to, but Y'all are smart, you'll get the gist. Here's another way to tell that my soil is too wet, is when I start using my soil blocker, I don't know if you can, let's see, you can see the unevenness, right? It's not flat across, right? It's packing in way too hard. I have excess along the sides a lot. Um, and I have excess, of course, right on the bottom. Now that's where I use the side of my bin that doesn't have soil and excuse me i rub it back and forth to try to break some of that excess off it's easier when you have a uniform base can we see that you can almost see the grid so i have a much more uniform base now it won't be the end of the world i think it's easier when it comes to watering and such okay so let me set my bin down move on to step two I'm just going to be covered in soil. My favorite thing to be. Do, do, do. Not really. Do you have any experience or knowledge about uh, 
Pit moss? Are you talking peat moss? or I don't know pit moss, but I know peat moss. Erin, let me know. <laughs> I said I'm going to return it. Don't worry. I'll clean it right after this demo. I told you I tried to throw it again, together. I thought you guys would want this info. Don't yell at me for my bucket of choice. <laughs> okay, so it's flat. It's packed. You can see it all in there. Um, it's good to be able to see the grid a little bit. That means you got it pretty flat. Hey, what are we doing? Jared, we are doing a soil blocker demo. Um, this is an alternative way to uh, sow your seeds instead of trays or like broadcast sowing. This is what we're doing. You'll see exactly what it looks like once I plunge it. So plunger on top. We're going to put, I push down to make sure it has good contact with whatever I'm plunging it onto. Plunge, pull up. Benefit of it being very wet is I can very easily dip this and you can see what we're working with. Okay, I now have, I thought the soil blocks were moving, but it's something in my box. Okay, I have 20 small soil blocks on here. Um, and it's kind of hard to tell, so I do apologize, but you can almost see the little dibble in each block. So right in the center is a little dibble, enough for me to put a small seed in. Pit moss is a soilless medium used as an amendment. Interesting. I'm going to have to look into that. I'm curious what the composition is. So no, I don't know much about that one. You'll have to teach me. Okay, so here we are. Here are my blocks. Now, anything this size, um, I'm looking at like my smaller, slow growing seeds. When it comes to starting seeds for me and the real estate, I will give seeds. Why would you soil block through though for, s I will get right to that, Simon. That's an awesome question. Um, okay, when I choose how much real estate a seed gets, is based on um, how quickly they grow and also my time, okay? If I'm choosing to start up um, quick growing seeds in small blocks, that means I need to add time into my schedule to be able to pop these up um, as soon as I start seeing roots, right? But if I have a slow growing seed that I'm gonna put in these small blocks, I have time um, they're going to be growing off on their own just fine, getting ready to go. I have time before I'll need to pot them up. Now, if I have a larger seed that's pretty fast growing, we're not starting here, okay? I will be starting in my two inch blocks, right? Terrible at guessing size, guys. Yeah, two inch blocks. Bigger seeds, faster growing. I will start here. Now, Simon had asked, why would you use soil blocking um, for sowing over like modular trays? It has its benefits. When we're using trays, as gentle as we can be, there's always some sort of root disturbance, right? And even though most everything can handle roots, root disturbance and take off just fine after, you know, maybe a little lag, it's one less thing that we have to worry about. Now, another reason is real estate. And when I say real estate in the planting world, um, I'm talking about one, how much room it takes up on my grow, like my grow station, as well as how much soil or medium a uh, seed needs to get where it needs to go. Does that make sense? If I have a tray, goodness, I wish I had one in here. There's one in my car, but that's too far away, guys. You know what, let me grab these jiffies. Hold that thought, friends. Okay. I'm back. Okay, so jiffy, these are great. Love them, especially if you're starting just a couple things, like great option to have. Uh, they obviously break down. You can plant them right in the ground. All good things. Now, in this stack are 12. 12 at, technically, we would have to go off this size. So the space these 12 plants take up is obviously much, hey, Chris, much larger than, goodness, than the space these 20 blocks 
fill up. Space is a huge reason we do soil blocking. Lack of root disturbance is another huge reason we do soil blocking. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, if I ever say something and you don't understand it, please toss that question in right away. Honestly, when I say real estate, I technically came up with that term because it makes sense in my head. I came up with it like, I don't know, a month ago when we were talking about something and I just picked it and ran with it. If I don't explain something well enough, please ask. It's the only way we're all going to learn. Okay, so like I said, small and... Yes, never enough time will hit watering. Um, okay, small and slow growing. Perfect option, rosemary. We're gonna pop this baby open, maybe. This is good, because I needed to start more rosemary. Let me get some to put them in. Cup. So a rosemary seed, they're pretty small. They're not, I mean, I don't even know if there's a way I can show you these because my hands are filthy. They're pretty small. They're like half the size of a grain of rice, right? So small. There is a tip. I learned this from the flower growing world that you can use a toothpick. It's the best way. Honestly, when I'm doing small seeds, it's a toothpick. I don't have one here. But what you basically do is you dab the end of your toothpick on your tongue or you can do it in a little thing of water just some sort of moisture is enough to grab a seed and to let it go into your soil blocks i wonder how i can okay we're gonna come down here lighting is probably gonna be funny so i'm sorry guys but hopefully can someone message in if this is okay like you can see okay just kidding, not that I can read your messages because my screen is almost closed. Okay, so like I said, mm -hmm -hmm. they're pretty small. Hopefully you can see these. Interesting, okay. It's odd, fair, it's odd. Okay, one little seed goes in each one of these, each one of these blocks, right? For very small seeds, remember the rule of thumb when planting seeds is you need to plant your seed twice as deep as they are wide, okay? So here we go. I guess I don't need to fill all of these in. Twice as deep as they are wide. I typically will do just a light, light dusting over them. Ooh, that one got two seeds. This is why the toothpick is helpful. Actually, I do want to talk about over sowing too, because I see it a lot, and it's not always, not always the best move. It's kind of a waste of money. Okay, so I'm full. Each block has one seed in it, and then if anything, I may just kind of tap it down just a little. You don't want to mess your soil blocks up. That's a way to do it. You could, could grab your soil and kind of just do like a. I would use drier soil, not exactly what I'm blocking with. And you can cover them up this way, which actually I'm not gonna ruin the rest of those. We're gonna use drier soil. So here I am. I have 20 rosemary seeds planted in this what? This probably is, I don't know, three by two. Terrible at size, guys, three by two. Okay. Okay, I'm back. This is gonna go. I like to start my rosemary on a heat mat for a minute just to get it to sprout immediately after it comes off, okay? So these are gonna go on my heat mat. Someone asked about watering. I'm glad you did. Obviously, wasn't planning on doing this demo today, but I wanted to, so we're here. I didn't have my trays. The trays I like to use are lunch trays that you can either get from a local school who's done using them, Ikea, I don't know if you have an Ikea near you, but Ikea sells, and they'll ship them, order them online. They sell um, like a lunch tray, 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 plastic tray. Those are great. They just have a small lip on them, like an inch high lip, just enough to water. They're great, easy to move, easy to stack for storage. Love them. Um, so I use trays, 
And typically on my IKEA trays, what is it? I can do, I think five. I can fit five blocks of my 20 on my, probably close to the sheet, like a sheet of paper. What, eight by 11, I think is the dimension of a piece of paper. So I can fit five or six blocks. Now, five times 20, 100, or 120 if I can fit six. Would love if they're, oh, <laughs> an Ikea close by. <laughs> um, order them online, like I said, they do ship. So try that, cafeteria trays for the win, yes. Um, okay, like I said, real estate. A Basically a sheet of paper, can fit 120 plants. Think of how much less work you have to do when all of your plants are in 120. Now, the best trick for labeling these, because obviously we're not gonna be putting sticks in them, right, with names on them, masking tape with the garden marker, um, just put it right in front of where this set of blocks are, label them golden, right? Okay, rosemary's grown on its heat mat. Let's talk larger. Same concept, but I wanna, okay. You can see them this way, this way. The larger block has the dibbler in it. These little, basically little nipples that come out, they're gonna indent a spot into your larger um, blocks big enough to be able to put these little fellas so you have no root disturbance. The one I have on here, because I didn't bring my connections with me, is technically one that you could plant the seed with. The one that fits the 20 set is a perfect square, perfect size. So it really is just setting it in there. Uh, I am gonna work one of these up so you can see the hole. Don't melt when you water them. Good, good question, Tracy. Okay, I guess we got stuck on trays and I didn't finish that thought. I'm sorry, guys. I use trays. The reason trays are awesome is because we water, we bottom water soil blocks. Bottom watering is like the secret to life. I bottom water everything. Rarely do I go above, and it's only if I have a tiny, tiny seed with soils, I, de depending on my soil's water holding capacity, because to have your seeds germinate, you need soil to water to seed contact. Um, to get them going. Hey, if you, Chris, if you can find a different place to source your soil block, I am not the person to go out there and say, you gotta spend all this money and all, you know, these super expensive pieces of equipment. I will jerry rig until I can figure something out or until my garden can produce enough money for me to comfortably purchase this. That's what I did. So we're bottom watering. Um, you'll get the hang of bottom watering, figuring out how much water you need to put in your trays to make it where your soil blocks will take in the water and not leave excess water in your tray. Benefit of the tray is that after, you know, a few hours of the day, you still see stagnant water. You can very easily just tip your tray a little and dump off that excess water until you get the hang of how much um, water you need to be able to keep these moist. Now, use a cookie cutter if you have to. Yeah, get crafty, Melissa. I like it. It's like a, <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, okay, does that answer your watering question? Do you know why we don't over, like, uh, water from above? Can anyone answer that for me? Yes, gypsum is a good one to put in your soil blocks to help absorb that water. Like I said, worm castings were all I had. We had one, one pack on the shelf right now, and I was like, it's mine now. Um... Yeah, ice cube trays. I, you guys, there are so many options for doing this. You don't need to buy the fancy stuff. Uh, Homesteader ju or North Star just put um, a link for an Amazon soil blocker. I didn't click on it. Maybe that one fits your budget a little bit. Yep, the Cocoa Core. You guys make me say it all the time. I can't pronounce it. I can when I'm not on camera, but I second guess myself every time the word wants to come out of my mouth. 
So dollar store ice cube tray is cool. Yes, I would, if I was using warm castings, um, I would mix in the cocoa core. I use Pro Mix for everything. It's straight across the board. It makes my life easy. Though there is a source here for some decent potting soil, organic potting soil uh, that I can buy in bulk. So once I look into that and I, I like want to back it, choir, is that it? It's pronounced like choir? Chester, you're my favorite. Thank you. I can work with that. Okay, good on watering. Oh, we don't water above. I don't think anyone, thank you, Aaron did. Watering above can disturb your seeds. And any disturbance just delays it. It's not gonna hint, like, it won't take it to the point where that seed's not gonna grow, but it can definitely uh, delay it, right? And any delay is a bother to us because it's longer it takes for us to get our plants outside. <laughs> God, Melissa, I'm not alone. I'm gonna go with choir. It probably has like a more of like an OU in there, but I'm taking it, okay? All right, let's go round two. Sorry, Luke, I'm getting warm castings all over your pretty countertop. I will clean it later. This one I'm not gonna hold up. This one's much heavier, just the blocker itself. So I'm gonna make a mess if I try to hold this up. It will be like all down my front. So we're gonna pack it in here using the side. I do like a scraping up to the side method. Use the side of my box to flatten it out. Check it out, I could use a little more soil. I'm gonna pack in a little more. Ooh. Do -do. See, this is a problem when your soil is too wet. You'll find this issue. I'm packing as much as, you know, as hard as I can, and I have a big hole here. So make sure you have the right water content. Also, worm castings are sticky as heck. So if you did not know that, now you do. Now you do. So I'm just gonna pack in there and cheat a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna flatten it out. All right, let's set this down. Same concept. Do to do. If I'm missing your questions right now as we're going over this, don't think I just skipped out of them. The chat moves pretty quick. I'm trying to catch things if I do, but just I'll give you know time for questions at the end. Feel free to put them in a second time. Same thing. You're gonna compress, push down into your your seedling tray or your cafeteria tray, whatever you're using. The cardboard box. This one's hard. Okay. Now with the really wet, yep. Okay, I'm glad this happened, hold on. It's sturdy, it won't break. Sorry if that was loud to your ears. Because I don't have good composition in my blocking material, this happened, okay? But luckily, I'm gonna lose some. Sorry, I told Luke I'd clean the counter later, it's fine. Luckily, at least with this first one, you can see the hole, right? So this made a bigger hole. Like I said, this nipple that's on it is mainly for planting seeds. So a bigger seed. Um, nasturtiums are a bigger seed. Sunflowers are a bigger seed. Um, checking out my seed wall. It, squashes and stuff you could do in this. They're all bigger seeds. Because remember the, yes, uh, Tanya, I am this year doing tomatoes, peppers. I'm basically doing it all. I am in a very small area this year to start my seeds. I need to conserve real estate. Okay, so bigger seeds are going in here. Rule of planting your seed. Two times as wide as, two times, goodness. Plant your seed two times the width of your seed. Does that make sense? I don't know why I have like a saying for it and it's not coming out of my mouth. Two times the depth, you know what I mean. Okay, scroll back. I said it 20 minutes ago. That's why they have the deeper nipples. So you can put a bigger seed deeper. Now I would take some loose soil, fill over them, and they would be good. 
Now, because I already moistened my soil prior to getting going, I'm not gonna be watering these right away. I would give it a day or two before I start watering. Now, the idea with plant seeds twice as deep as they are wide. Thank you, North Star. I don't know why. I mean, it's my saying. I don't know why I couldn't spit it out. Okay, I've been saying it for years. Like I said, there's a different um, adapter I could put on the end where that nipple was. I can take that off. I can put the square adapter in so that way when I plunge out these larger blocks, it would give me a square insert, okay? Um, what you would do is once you start to see roots begin to emerge from the sides and the bottom of your smaller soil blocks or any from your soil blocks, it's time to pot up. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you think I'm funny because <laughs> sometimes I watch these back and I'm like, I'm an embarrassment. You should just stop what you're doing. <laughs> okay, it's fine. We're going to keep going. So like I said, the insert would make it a square. It would fit perfectly. I'm messing it up right now so it fits. As soon as I were to see roots coming out of this, it would take so little root disturbance, obviously. I put square block and a round hole. Didn't work. It fits right in there and it now has more real estate to take over. Make sense, everyone? I need to put that, my little planting thing on a sticker or something. Just stick to my computer and I can't mess my saying up. Let me know. What do you guys think? Bye, Simon. I hope this helped. If you need more info, we're, we're going to be on here another maybe eight minutes. We'll probably go to 50 um, to try to answer a few extra questions. Feel free to come back after the fact if you have to go and catch up on it. I know we started late and I'm sorry, friends. Sorry. Okay. Haley, I found sprinkling vermiculite on top is very helpful in keeping seeds from drying out. That's great. Yes. Very helpful, especially when getting used to bottom watering. Um, vermiculite, just a nice dusting over top. Very common for people to use. Um, so yes, that is a great one. And you can do that instead of the dusting of soil. Um, it's kind of just what I have in front of me. Vermiculite's a great option. Cool, I'm glad you guys got it. Okay, fire your questions at me. I'm gonna only you can see my workspace. It's a little dirty in here. Where can I find sand to make my own potting mix? Why do you want to use sand? I'm not, you know, I, and I know Luke and I vary in opinion here a little bit, which is great. We both have different gardening practices. I believe he does have a video where he does mix sand into a starting mix. Um, I shouldn't be cleaning right now. He does mix sand into a potty mix to give it um, drainage, right? But there are so many other things out there that I think help better with drainage that aren't going to hinder the possible texture of your soil in your garden beds. I can't get into like texture and all that really well here today, but texture of soil is basically talking about your soil particles as well as the holes and the gaps, like air pockets around your particles. Now in quick, now I want a croissant. I want a croissant. Who's got croissants? <laughs> um, okay, so let's go through the three real quick. Clay. Clay has, their, has larger particles, smaller holes, right? Clay does not drain very well. Um, like a loam, something in the middle is pretty even. It's got relatively the same size particles as it does pockets. Now when we go to sand, sand has very tiny particles. Um, it doesn't necessarily have large pockets, but the particles don't compact. Therefore, sand is a very uh, quick draining texture. To your soil. Now, sand can have its place in the world. In all honesty, where I garden, where my farm is on my grandparents' property, they have basically straight sand. If I were to be planting directly into the sand, I'd have a problem, right? I had to build my beds up onto the sand um, with compost and all of that, build them up kind of Hugel culture style. Um, 
because otherwise I would have so much drying out. I would be wasting so much water. It wouldn't be great. So sand, it has its place in the world. You can work with it. But if I don't need to add sand into something, um, don't. Now this is, I love that you put this in there, Brampton, but I'll send you some clay. Hold it. I don't want it because if you don't know that clay and sand, what happens when they get put together? Does anyone know? So say you have, yeah, clay grounds, right? Yeah, sand wicks without smothering. Sand has its place, Chris, I agree. But the most common thing that people don't know is what happens when um, you have clay and you try to amend it with sand instead of using compost or something like that. Rock. Christina, yes. It will, Chester, yes. It turns it into cement. So like I said, clay, bigger particles, really small air pockets. What type had really small particles? Sand. So it basically works its way, finds all those air pockets, locks them right up. You now have cement and roots do not grow in cement. Just kidding. Dandelions like to grow up through cement, but most things won't, right? So that's that's my reasoning for not adding sand to different starting mixes. And I also don't tell people to because we can very easily accidentally create cement, and I would hate for that to happen. So instead, I suggest um, perlite, uh, vermiculite, uh, cocoa coir. Did I do it? Did I do it? Did I get it? Uh, peat moss. Stuff like this is a great add to your mix to create drainage, to create that really great texture so that way you have good wicking capability. Yes, gypsum does help clay break down. So if you do have clay, we got ways to amend it. Gypsum, lots of compost, very good. Very good. That was, y'all, good topic. I like it. Use sand and succulent and cactus potting soil. You can, for sure, especially because those things most often are not in the ground unless you're in Arizona, right? Or Florida. Or actually so many other places, guys, but I'm in Michigan, so it's not here. Okay, now Victoria has asked a couple times. I'm glad you brought it back up. Thank you so much. While I'm answering this, if you have more questions, put them in all caps. I want to get the last couple of these out of the way. I got soil in my nose, sorry. Um, okay, put them in all caps so I can see them. Victoria asks how to harden plants off to go out into a caterpillar tunnel. Typically in the spring when we're talking hardening off for like the typical average gardener who's not using any type of season extensions. Caterpillar tunnels, low tunnels, whatever you want to call them, those are season extensions. Even out to a greenhouse as the temperature rises is a season extension. Anything that lets your plants grow without being hindered by the current temperature. I made that definition up, but it makes sense. Anyways, you're going to harden it off the same way you would in the spring. What we have to pay attention to is the temperature. So we're gonna be wanting to use the warmer parts of the day. Now remember, the sun is not very extreme right now. Um, the, what would it be the UV index? I don't know. The sun is not as powerful in the winter, in the spring, as it is in summer, right? Someone who is a little more sciencey, please help me out there with some terminology. Um, so we're not as afraid of putting in direct sunlight for a little time to start going. You know, in the spring, we start in the shade for an hour or two. For that day, we come back, we do shade and a little sun, bring them in. Shade, longer sun, bring them in. Sun to the shade, bring them in. You know, there's a process. These steps we have to hit so that way we're not stressing these plants out. We don't have to worry about the sun quite as much. Um, be mindful of them, especially wherever you are. If your sun is extremely hot, don't do it. Put them in shade first, but you're going to be hardening them off the same way. Start introducing them to the outdoor climates. Make sure indoors you have um, a fan oscillating in the room, not directly on your plants. You want it moving in the room enough to move air around so that way um, it's strengthening our plants. That's introducing them to wind on the outside. So make sure you have that off on too. Victoria, 
If something didn't make sense, let me know. Greenhouse plastic. Yeah, that's great. You just make sure we're, yeah, give them a couple days outside. I'm sorry, I really shook the computer. A couple days outside in like different environments. Shade, sun, all the things. Yeah, some amount of clay can be desirable. Chris, you are my favorite devil's advocate. He's so good at making sure I explain things so well, so I appreciate it. I'm not saying straight clay is bad. I'm really not even saying straight sand is bad. Technically, I have it. I just don't want you to put them together. <laughs> um, when should I start butterflies with my girls? Good question. Now I'm thinking, because I'm doing butterflies with my preschoolers. For those of you who don't know, I teach three and four-year-olds preschool. Um, I think we're doing them, it's in my, like the curriculum I'm using for this area, and I was content with it. Uh, a, probably in April, March, March, April. Are you ordering them, Christina? Curious how you guys are doing it. Can you buy compost at a store? Sure you can. It'll be in a bag. Um, Peggy, if you have any type of farm nearby, I suggest you start there. Um, you can use horse manure, cow manure, um, uh, you so many things. So there's nothing really bad about compost that you're getting from the store, but you just know you don't know its composition, you don't know its nutrients content. And I only say that because we use compost because of its nutrient content, right? And its ability to fix texture and soil. All right, let me do a little um, catch it up here. What soil for potatoes? Um, potatoes love sand. So sea sand has a place. So the looser, the better, because they're trying to make these big roots down there. You don't want them to fight so hard, you're going to have smaller tubers. What do I do about ants in the soil in my trays? Cinnamon. Cinnamon helps me keep ants out of everything. Um, all of my seedling starts, whether I'm putting the vermiculite on top or a dusting of soil as well, all have cinnamon. It helps keep ants, fungus gnats, um, any of that away. Oh man, I missed everything. Did the time change? Jenny, on my way in, I had decided that I want to do a soil block demo. Therefore, we started a little late because I had to get set up. Um, but please go back and watch it and leave a comment for me, Jenny. I want to know what you think. Um, just trying to catch all my questions because we're going to wrap up here. Christine filling mushroom soil. Very cheap here. Okay, I am coming. I'm coming. Get me some mushroom soil. I'm here for it. Uh, on their feed though. Very good point, Melissa. Anytime, yes, if I'm suggesting you to go to a farm and source out soil, compost, whatever, you have to do your due diligence and knowing how their compost or what's it composed of. Therefore, if they are a farm who uses Roundup, turn your little hindquarters around and walk out, find a new farm. Um, and then obviously, things are gonna vary. Now, if you're a gardener and you're like, no chemicals whatsoever, none. In compost, if it's well broken down appropriately, most everything can burn off in reality. Um, if we're breaking down all the way to the chemistry, the heating up of the soil, the microbes in it, everything will break down everything in it. Eventually, it will become very, very clean, right? But then you have to take into account, did you properly compost this? Was it at the right temps for the right time? Um, how long has it been sitting here? How aged is it? Age is important. So yes, you guys need to be responsible enough to ask your own questions when you're sourcing things. That's even from the store. Ask your questions. It will make you a much stronger gardener. It'll make you stronger in life. I'm going to go. Thanks for your help. You are welcome. I also hate that North America, the U.S. in general, doesn't take, I mean, in my opinion, doesn't take a lot of things in the agriculture world seriously. We can be doing a lot better. That's why this is so important for us. If we can get everyone growing a garden, 
we will have, I think I read a stat this morning. It was like 10, oh, I'm going to ruin the stat. Maybe I'll find it and post it on Instagram. Um, we need everyone growing a garden. There is no reason, no matter where you are, because it can be small, that you shouldn't be growing something. What comes into the play, um, into play if you're in a small area is the barter system, right? I talk about it all the time. Barter system, I wish we could go back to it, and I do as much as I can. Um, say you only have space to grow pepper, a pepper plant and a tomato plant. Great. Now share with your neighbor who has the space to grow greens. Um, get creative with your containers on what you can grow in. If certain things can grow inside so you have more space outside, great, do that too. Herbs do great inside. Um, the more we can do it, the more we can barter, the better it's gonna be. Roses grew over eight feet tall, bloomed until December. How do I know Woody knew wood? Um, okay. Typically for mine, Christina, I can tell based on what it looks like. The woody, yeah, because you're you're gonna bloom on your new. You know, Christina, message me over on Instagram, either mine or Root Shoots, either or. Message me over there. Let's talk more about your your roses. Um, yeah, let's do it. Yes. Robin, I knew you were my girl. Did you tell me what I'm bartering for, for the gluten-free sourdough starter? Because I need that. Yes, you can use horse manure. You want to make sure they're giving it away for free. They always are. There's a lot of it. Um, ask its age. You want it to be at least a year old. If you have the space, take it anyways and start your own compost pile. It's a great starter for a compost pile. It's already inoculated with all the things it needs. You can start putting in your scraps, your lawn clippings, etc., and really building it up. Yes, yep. Melissa, I'm just getting back over there. I've got, my life's been a little wild the last couple months, um, as all you know. So I'm doing my best to be here and be, you know, available for you guys, but I had to tackle some some life things, but we're better. We're back now. So all my Instagrams are back up and functional. Like I said, um, at the beginning of this chat, I happen to hit a thousand followers on my Instagram, my personal one. Um, and I'm doing giveaway over there. So if some of y'all want some fun sunflower seeds, you're going to have to go follow me today. I'll be posting that giveaway. If you want to find me. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the info on this. Uh, question. Someone suggested using mosquito bits to kill fungus gnat, but it is bad chemical for plants to produce food. Yep. I will say don't use, and this, this is an opinion, don't use mosquito bits on your edibles. If you want to use it on a house plant, I know a lot of people do. All good and well. That's your choice. It's still not my thing. I won't use it. I'll use cinnamon way before. Cinnamon and like the yellow sticky traps are plenty. Just stay on top of it. Don't overwater. That's why I'm fungus gnats come. Um, when it comes to chemicals, it has to be a personal choice. Uh, all right. I think we're here. I think we're done for the day, team. Thank you guys so much for hanging on here. I think we had almost 300 at one point. So hopefully you guys were interested in soil blocking. Uh, it's really helpful. Toss a like on there. Share this around with friends. Hopefully this will help them. Maybe introduce them to a new tool. Now, let's talk barter system one last time. Say you have gardeners around you. I think someone asked earlier and I forgot. Someone asked how much soil blockers were. Typically, if you're getting the combo, which I do suggest, um, the, the three quarter and at least the two inch, if not a one inch, all good and well, together, around $70. Um, Gardener's Workshop often does a overstock sale. I got sets for $50 there. Someone posted it on Amazon. Now say $70, but you have three other gardeners, even within a half hour of you, you know? Three other gardeners and you're like, I want them, they all want them. There's no reason all of us really need to buy them. So what you do is you order one, maybe two sets for all of you and you split the cost 
and you do a soil blocking party. It's the best. So someone's making soil, someone's blocking, someone's getting seeds started. Use the people around you. The community we build is the strongest thing, the most important thing we can have. A lovely. Hello from Alaska. All right, cool. Yeah. Come find me over at I'm MI Garden Gal. I had it way before I started here, I promise. Um, but that's me over on Instagram. That's just how I knew Luke and I were a match made in heaven. We're a good team, that's all. Um, yeah, so come follow me. I am sharing. I will be posting this afternoon for that giveaway if, if you want some cool sunflower seeds. All right, friends. I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, spring is coming, and I couldn't be more thrilled. And I hope you guys are gearing up really ready. Make sure you're looking into any info you need. Um, great time for education and getting started. Just get your hands dirty. It's the best. Best feeling. Um, cool. I'll talk to you next week, guys. Back at 930 like normal. And uh, we'll see you then. See ya.